Back out of Hemisphere Arena, sold out over 16,000 on hand as you look at tonight's Jeep Eagles starting lineups. The matchups will be a key considering the first meeting between these two, and especially have to be Anderson and Jordan because they uh, really that battle was won by Michael Jordan in game one. Michael Jordan outscored Willie Anderson 31 to 2. Willie Anderson only shot one for eight. Rod Strickland, a big game, 17 assists. So we'll have to watch that matchup with John Paxson as well. And the head coaches for both teams. First of all, Phil Jackson for the Chicago Bulls. And Bob Bass making his fourth relief appearance. He calls himself the Goose Gossage of the NBA. Ninth year overall, fourth here in San Antonio with a record of 119 and 91. Said he's just going to coach to the end of the year and they will be looking for a head coach come next season. And we are just about set for the opening tip off. The Bulls and the Spurs tonight on TNT. The officials tonight, Dan Crawford, Nolan Fine, and Jim Kinsey. You know, I think the Bulls look forward to these kind of games. It's a real challenge for them. They don't get that many games during the season of this competitive. Well, that's something Bob Bass says he really tells the players to go ahead and do. You get the open shot, go ahead and take it. We have the first foul. And Terry Cummings did just that. Well, Sean Elliott cannot get in foul trouble. They need him defensively against Scottie Pippen. That's a very good matchup. Sean Elliott as big as Scottie Pippen and as quick and can do a good job defensively so they cannot get him in quick foul trouble. As you heard in our opening tease in game one back on the 17th of January, Chicago won at 102-96. Robinson tips it out, Paxson chases it down. In that game, San Antonio built a nine-point first-half lead as Michael Jordan took only seven shots in the first 24 minutes. Top coming left open for 18 in and out. Robinson with the board over Cartwright and he draws the foul. You see the philosophy already of Bob Bass. Two quick shots in transition before a set play was run. And what that does, Ron, that also gives David Robinson the freedom to get to the boards quickly, maybe get some second shots. He has the quickness and speed advantage over Bill Cartwright, but if he has to post up in a low post game, Bill Cartwright will punish him and push him off the block. That's something for the game. It's difficult to play against Robinson because you're not really sure what type of moves he has because they only play him two times a year. That's not bad. 206 straight for David Robinson, the only player to be in the top 10 in five different categories. That is amazing, especially if you consider David Robinson is a center. Spurs lead at 4 nothing. We are 45 seconds in the quarter, number one, from San Antonio. Jackson looking down low to Cartwright. Strickland fakes the double team. Paxson will pull the trigger from 20, doesn't get it. Scotty Pippen knocks it out of the hands of Willie Anderson, the Spurs have it. One of the real concerns for San Antonio coming to this game also defensively is they're an excellent team against the uh, team's field goal shooting, 43% defensively. The first game, Chicago shot 53%, which really spelled doom for the Spurs in the second half. Chicago is 0 for 3 from the floor. San Antonio, one of two. Shot clock at five. Anderson checks it. Pulls the trigger over Jordan. Jordan heads down the court quickly. But Elliott with the board and the slam. Well, Michael tried to slip away, uh, Doug, and Phil Jackson is going to call a 20-second timeout. And the uh, rowdy rags are being uh, waved here in San Antonio. The Kind of the San Antonio version of the Homer Hankey. Let's take a look at Sean Elliott underneath again. Chicago normally a very good defensive rebounding team. You see Horace Grant here does not pursue the ball. He lets the ball bounce. Horace at 10 rebounds a game allows Sean Elliott to pick up the loose ball and get the finish. Talking about defense, Doug. You win with D. Well, we talk about points allowed, and you see the Bulls third, the Spurs second, but I really look at opponents' field goal percentage. I think that's really a sign because when you keep teams down to 43, 44, 45 percent, you are not giving up easy shots, you're not giving up transition baskets, and normally you're doing a good job defensive rebounding. Both of these teams do a very good job of that, and again, Chicago shot 53 percent in the first game, which is really the difference in their win. Now they find themselves down by six. Played almost two minutes in the first quarter. Grant looks to open up the scoring for San Antonio, for Chicago, way short. The Bulls now 0 for 4 from the floor. 
Strickland penetrates and dishes off to Anderson, who doesn't get the J. Well, yeah, Doug, we noticed definitely a little up tempo for San Antonio as in weeks past as Scotty Pippen gets the finger roll. First two for Chicago. Took him just over two minutes to score. Here's a problem for Chicago right here. Cartwright getting back defensively with David Robinson, although Robinson missed both shots. He had an opportunity. Well, they credit Bill Curry with the block. Paxson's shot goes down. Last year, he was worst among starting centers in blocks. This year, he doesn't fare much better. He's only blocked three shots. That was his fourth block of 1991-92. Well, San Antonio, point-blank shot for Strickland on the screen roll. Didn't get the layup to go. And fans wanted to travel on Paxson. San Antonio has it. They lead it by two, 9-10 in the first. For Robinson, inside the Cummings. Great passing by the Spurs. Now, Chicago likes to play at this tempo also. This is nothing new for them. They like to get you into a running game and then find about a seven or eight minute period of the game where they try to stop you defensively. So we'll have to watch as this game goes if they can do that tonight. Robinson, another rebound. Gets the outlet to Strickland. Robinson with three boards. Anderson with a hole strong. Backed away by Scotty Pippen. That is his 47th block of the year. Jordan has a block by Robinson. The NBA's best. Well, the people are excited about this play. The Admiral David Robinson, Michael Jordan, a little shake and bake. And there's David Robinson to meet the challenge with a blocked shot. Well, they want the shot clock changed. The ball never hit the basket, so I don't know what they're going to do here, what they're going to put up on the clock, but they should definitely not get a new 24. No, it's only 11 now. San Antonio, 3 of 10 shooting. Chicago, 2 of 9. The official over on the far side checking with the official timer. They're going to take time off the game clock. Well, they're keeping it 11. Pippen triggers the inbounds pass to Jordan. They can get it. Cartwright battles for the rebound, knocks it out, Spurs have the ball. I think David Robinson telling Terry Cummings, you've got to get in on the boards and rebound. Terry Cummings is leaking out on the fast break, wanting to get out early, not rebounding. David Robinson alone against three players. San Antonio must get the rebound before they can run. In the last six games, Terry Cummings has been averaging better than eight rebounds a game, which is better than his seven rebound a game for the season. A little isolation at the top of the floor for Sean Elliott to go against Scotty Pippen. Sean Elliott was very fortunate that time. He sort of flipped the ball to the basket and, and the shot was blocked. The foul was called. But against Chicago, you're going to have to go in there strong, try to dunk the basketball. They're an excellent defensive team around the rim with Pippen, Grant, and Michael Jordan specifically. Ron, I feel that Sean Elliott has an opportunity to vault into the class of a Scotty Pippen. I know that's a, a strong comment to make, but I think this young man, once he realizes the talent that he has and he can get his confidence to that level, I, I think he's a tremendous young player. Elliott has four, and the Spurs lead is six during the eight-minute mark of the first quarter. In case you're wondering, every time Scotty Pippen moves, remember in game one between these two, seen here on TNT, Pippen and Rod Strickland got into it. Jordan to the hole, and he's taken bait. Blocked by Robinson, his second. Anderson, the spin move. Almost too many passes. Robinson hasn't even made it down the court yet. It is a two-on-two. -two. Great defensive effort by David Robinson. He looked up. I don't think if he would have looked up, would have hit him in the head. This is one of the most intense regular season games I've seen this year. You can tell that San Antonio and this crowd is ready. This is a tremendous challenge for Chicago to come in and withstand this because San Antonio is playing at a level right now that they have not played at this season. Not with his 2 of 11, Robinson with the steal. He's got Anderson all the way. What a move by David Robinson. You're shaking your head. <laughs> hey, big guys aren't supposed to do that in the open floor like that. Michael Jordan back, and he picks it up and steps around him. What a tremendous play. Listen to the crowd in San Antonio.
know the all-around greatness of David Robinson. Here's Scotty Pippen trying to post. David Robinson reads it. Now watch the big guy in the open court. Michael Jordan goes for the steal. He pulls it back and dunks the basketball. Tremendous open court play by David Robinson. And what does he mean to this team? When we take a look, you see points, yes, 10th, rebound 6th, field goal percentage 6th, steals, one of the top five in the league, and block shots. He already has two in the game in the steal. So you see the all-around greatness of David Robinson here witnessed in the first four minutes of this ball game. We talk about the Spurs defense. Don't forget they're also number one in defensive field goal percentage. Opponents are shooting just about 43% from the outside. Cartwright's shot won't go down. Michael Jordan with only two shots so far. Cummings pulls the trigger. Got it. Cummings with six, the Spurs with 14. Chicago two for 12 in the opening four minutes of the ball game, shooting the ball. Spurs on an 8-0 run. Cummings almost picks the pocket of Grant. Jordan goes baseline left, shot partially blocked again by Robinson. That is his third block, and the Spurs will have the ball. And Robinson thrusting his fist. And that's not just any shot he's blocking, that's a dunk by Michael Jordan. Michael exploded the last time he tried to trick him and flip the shot. This time he tried to power it. And David Robinson with a tremendous block shot. Bob Bass says the only pressure he feels is from this team. He says they're so talented, you almost have to win. Strickland for two. Right now, San Antonio can do no wrong. Chicago must maintain their composure. They're you have to expect San Antonio at some point to cool off, and it might happen now because it looks like Sean Elliott has picked up his second foul. That is indeed on Elliott. That is his second. How about the block again? Here it comes. Well, here's Michael. He's taken off, and you see him meeting him right at the top. Beautiful play. Scotty Pippen goes for the save, cannot get it. And now Bob Bass has got a decision to make. Sean Elliott has two fouls. Still have six minutes and 14 seconds remaining. In the first quarter, he's got to go to his bench, and the problem he's going to have, Ron, he's coming in with Antoine Carr. So you've got Antoine Carr and Terry Cummings on the front line. Neither one of them can match up with Scottie Pippen, but what Bob Bass is banking on is that Scottie Pippen cannot match up with him either. Let's see what happens now during this next period of time, because you know Chicago's going to pressure defense mm -hmm. after this free throw and try to force some turnovers. That's the first Chicago point in the last three minutes and 20 seconds as Pippen gets them both. We saw Pippen's numbers today. Of course, he was named to the NBA All-Star Reserve Squad. Rightly so. This is also something Bob Bass wanted. As you mentioned, Doug, talking about the Antoine Carr coming in. Cummings and Carr on the floor at the same time. Inside, Cummings, Pippen backs off, and Cummings takes advantage for his eighth point of the ball game. You can see right now San Antonio going to a three-man play. Just a simple screen across. Cummings coming to the post, and Chicago is not adjusted. That's two field goals for Cummings on that same play. Michael Jordan with his first two of the ball game. How about the old philosophy? Everybody, when you play San Antonio, you pack it in and make them shoot the outside. But now San Antonio forcing the action like that. How does that change your defensive strategy? Well, you still want them to shoot the jump shot. Right now, they're getting jump shots and rhythm off the fast break. It's not in the half-court game. It's into a transition game where they're in a rhythm. You've got to get them in a half-court game. The There's Bruce go. Pippen goes to the hole. Count the basket. And he draws the foul. They're going to have to double-team Scotty Pippen. They're going to have to get the ball out of his hands. If they're going to isolate, there's no way Antoine Carr or Terry Cum Cummings can play him. This is what we talk about matchups in the NBA. Antoine Carr, look at the room that he's giving Scotty Pippen. Scotty sizes him up, and still with a long, loping drive, Strickland is too late to get there. The opportunity for a three-point play. Scotty Pippen out of Hamburg, Arkansas, about 10 miles from the Louisiana-Arkansas border, completes the three-point play. Pippen now with seven, the lead is nine. 5.20 remaining to be played in the first quarter. Here comes Anderson, as it's blocked by Horace Grant. You can see right now the Spurs philosophy. We talked to Bob Bass today. When they press, when they are pressed by Chicago, they want them to take the ball to the basket and attempt to score. That time, Horace Grant with a nice block shot on Willie Anderson. Anderson outside, and he drains it from deep in the corner for his first two. Cummings quickly picks up Pippen. Grant being guarded by Robinson. Cartwright pops up for the 15-footer, doesn't get it. David Robinson with the rebound, that is his fourth. And the Spurs turn it over. Bulls can't convert, the whistle, loose ball foul. I think they're gonna call it on Grant, not on Jordan. 
That is on Grant, that is his first personal. Forrest Grant made a nice defensive play. He batted the pass down, the outlet pass from David Robinson, missed the shot, and I think in his frustration to go back and get it, committed the foul. Screen roll here, Strickland, looks like, or I guess they're going back to Antoine Carr in the post against Horace Grant. And Cummings tried to set, set a pick on Grant, didn't get it. Carr will fire away, the high arc is short, Robinson with the rebound. The left-handed baby hook. Here comes Michael. Gordon, one of five so far from the floor. Will Purdue check, check into Chicago's lineup. Shot clock at 11. Cartwright? Nope. The basketball company does draw the foul. The reason you're seeing Will Purdue come into the ballgame, he's more mobile than Bill Cartwright. And in game one against this team in 25 minutes, he was 5 for 5 from the field, had 11 rebounds, so he really played David Robinson to a standoff. I think you're going to see David Robinson play much more attention to Will Purdue tonight than he did about two weeks ago. Outside, Michael Jordan, in and out, no good. Cummings with the rebound, loses the handle, and Doug, we just got this handed to us. Dominic Wilkins has ruptured his right Achilles tendon. He was carried off the floor, we understand. Oh, that's terrible. That is that a is... terrible blow, not only for the Atlanta Hawks, but Dominic, of course, named to the All-Star team today. That is that is terrible. Oh, boy, the Achilles, you just don't want to hear that. It's like the uh, cruciate ligament. You don't want to hear anybody getting that. Well, of course, Craig Sager in our studios in Atlanta will update you that on the Prudential Halftime Report. Inside, nobody can get it. Somebody put it in the hole, and Will Purdue does. And you talked about his success in game one. David Robinson said, that's one thing that bothered me about game one. I did not contain Will Purdue. Will Purdue had four offensive rebounds in game one. You can see right there the opportunity for the second shot and the score. So the emotion is out of this game now. The execution is back, and the Bulls are within nine. So we'll see what happens now as this game settles into a flow. Well, they force Robinson way outside, but what does he do? Well, he drains the 17-footer. Robinson with six. The lead is back up to 11. Horace Grant would like the ball in the post against Antoine Carr. Michael Jordan waves him off. He's going to go back into Will Purdue now. The Bulls were swept by San Antonio last year. Grant holds the trigger. Doesn't get the roll. Cummings with the rebound. Outlet to Strickland with 3.05 left in the first. Good job there by John Paxson to close off the driving lane. Carr way long on his jump shot. Strickland tries to track it down, but he stepped on the line. Chicago has it. We've got a timeout. 257 remaining to be played in the first. It's first 24, Chicago 13. 24 13 is our score. We have 257 remaining in the first on Saturday, February 1st. A road to Albertville continues as host Ernie Johnson Jr. takes a look at Albertville ambiance beginning at 4 30 p.m. And then don't forget the Winter Olympics on TNT. First time ever on cable. They'll get underway Monday, February 10th, starting at 1 o'clock Eastern time to take the afternoon off a couple of days next week or in a couple of weeks and see the Winter Olympic Games right here on TNT. Bob Bass made a good comment to us today, Doug. He says, you know, I'm not going to coach negative basketball. What did he mean by that? Well, I said, I asked him the same question. I said, Bob, what do you mean by that? And he said, I'll tell you what I mean by that. He said, if a guy comes down and takes a bad shot, I'm not going to get up and yell at him for taking that shot. I'm just going to tell him, that's the shot Phil Jackson wanted you to take. He said, I want him to be upset at Phil, not at me. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. B.J. Armstrong, the third-year pro out of Iowa, has checked into the lineup for the Bulls. Now, Scotty Pippen has become such a great player. Here he is in the first quarter. Michael has not got it going yet with only two points. Scotty Pippen keeping the team alive with nine first quarter points. The Bulls shooting six for 24. Inside, Antoine Carr. A couple of fakes and he puts the exclamation point on it. Sean Elliott is also coming for San Antonio. And as we mentioned, he's playing with two personal fouls. Let's look at Scotty Pippen on the opposite end. The thing I like about this shot by Scottie Pippen is he takes the ball where he wants to take it and watch the extension. Nice soft shot in the lane. That's a very difficult shot, and Scottie Pippen made that look very easy. And here's Antoine Carr. Now, you stop this, Ron. This is about 250 pounds of runaway muscle here, and he just takes three guys to the basket with him. Well, the only thing that stops that, I think, is a Domino's delivery, man. I may be wrong, but that's probably the only thing that can stop Antoine Carr. He goes to the line. He's a friend. I can say it. 75%. And he's 100% this evening. Both teams now starting to go to their bench. Stacey King in the game. Stacey King has played very good basketball for Chicago. You have Will Purdue and B.J. Armstrong. So 
Chicago now starting to go to the depth and try to make something happen here in this first quarter. Pippen bangs in and hits the offensive foul on Scotty Pippen, his second personal foul. We talk about how Chicago is not shooting very well against San Antonio. We might want to bring up that there have been only four teams in the San Antonio Spurs 41 games that have shot better than 50% against this club. And right now, Chicago at 25%. Well, I'm going to throw some numbers at you after a while mathematically, and you'll see why teams shoot such a poor percentage. 43% <laughs> on the year, opponents for San Antonio. Two minutes left in the first. Card dumps it off. Strickland uses his body, and he uses a little English on the ball. Nice pass by Antoine Carr. He created that with a little dribble penetration in the lane. He found Rod Strickland. Rod Strickland has the unique ability to be able to hang until the last minute to take the shot. Purdue on Robinson, the left-handed shot, David Robinson's fourth block. He is averaging five, and then he and Purdue tangle up going down the court. Here comes Michael. The no-look pass, Pippen over Antoine Carr. <laughs> oh! Antoine didn't move, and Scotty went right over him. What, a, what an unbelievable play by Scotty Pippen. I mean, you can't describe what he just did. Let's watch uh, David Robinson and Will Purdue. They are really hooking it up down low. Robinson takes it inside on Purdue, doesn't get the basket. King with the rebound, outlet to Pippen. Bill Purdue out on the run. Gordon takes his time working on Carr. He can take him off the dribble, but instead pulls the trigger on the fall away and knocks it down. Well, Antoine Carr did everything right that time. He kept Michael Jordan away from the basket. Michael Jordan just hit a spectacular shot. But that's what you've got to do. You've got to force to keep them outside. Don't let them get to the free throw line. Get your team in foul trouble. Walk. Strickland walked with it. How about Scotty Pippen? Let's see how high he got up as San Antonio commits their five, fifth turnover of the ball game. And how far he took off out on the floor. Look at this. He takes off. And Antoine Carr thought he was going to get a charge. And Scotty almost jumped right over his head. I saw Julia Serving do this one game, and he did the scissor split right over the top of a guy's head. A guy fell thinking he got the charge, and the guy jumped right over his head. That'll teach him. B.J. Armstrong gets in the books his first two of the ball game. Number 23 for San Antonio, Greg Sutton, the rookie out of Oral Roberts University. He stands 6'2", 170. Quietly, in the ball. quietly we have an eight-point ball game. Chicago on a 6-0 run. Robinson and Purdue doing a little pushing and shoving still. Jordan misses the steal. Vinny Johnson over Stacey King. Chicago is a gambling team defensively. And if you can take, keep them from getting the steals and make the extra pass, you can get some good shots. Michael Jordan right around Vinny Johnson then pulls up for his sixth point of the ballgame. At the buzzer, the shot won't go down by Sutton, but we played 12 minutes, and it has been a good one for San Antonio. They lead it 31-23. We'll do some business and come back for quarter number two. expect? Elmer Fudd? Nice shot. Nice shot. This flaws him every time. Yoo-hoo! Nice shot. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That's all, folks. Well, that's my line. This is Craig Sager. The second quarter about to begin in San Antonio. But in Atlanta, Dominique Wilkins, known as the human highlight film, now having film in the form of x-rays being taken on his right ankle. Take a look at it right here, right in front of Bobby Weiss in the Hawks bench. He goes to the floor. Initial reports, a ruptured right ankle carried off the court on the stretcher. He is now on his way to the hospital. He was named today to the All-Star team for the seventh time in ten years. Back to Ron and Doug. Well, I wish Dominique our best, and uh, hopefully it uh, will heal quickly. If you look at Michael Jordan, his well, team trails 
31. Ron, I, I can hardly look at those highlights when someone yeah. gets hurt like that. It's well, in game one between these two, Chicago only scored 22 in the first quarter. They get 23 here, and San Antonio 19 and four on the season when they lead after the first quarter of play. Well, Greg Sutton's going to have to do a good job now of running this team. He's not really a legit point guard. He's more of a scorer, so he's going to have to do a good job of moving this ball around. Elliott tries to take Pippen off the dribble instead, just pulls up with a jumper. It wasn't pretty, but it counts. Scotty Pippen thought he traveled. Yeah. Well, Bob Bass likens young Greg Sutton to Wyatt Earp since he's got the quickest release he's ever seen. Pippen for two, he gets it. Scotty Pippen now, good first half. 13 points for the ball game. It looks like both coaches are going to go to Pippen and Elliott to see who's going to pick up their third foul the soonest. Elliott now with the ball at the top against Pippen. Remember, both these guys have two fouls. Elliott goes inside, a little right hand finger roll, finds the hole, and Sean Elliott now with eight. Nice quick move by Sean Elliott. That's a little bit what I was talking about, Ron. He's lanky, he's rangy, he can defend and run, he can shoot the ball. He's got the whole package, he just has to believe it. Stacey King over Antoine Carr goes hard to the floor, no foul called. King did an excellent job while Bill Cartwright was injured. Sutton for three, he's not afraid to put him up. Carr, the left-handed hook over Purdue, goes down. Sutton leads the team in most three-point attempts at 50 now as Jordan tries to answer it. Chicago's a little out of sync right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see Phil Jackson take a timeout of San Antonio scores on this possession. Michael Jordan, three of nine from the floor. Here comes Pippen. He has King on the left. Armstrong spots up. Well, Purdue's got a mismatch. He has Benny Johnson if they find him. Now he's all alone inside. Shot blocked by both Antoine Carr and David Robinson and Benny Johnson cherry picking down below. And he gets it. Bulls are out of sync right now, Ron. The defense is terrific by San Antonio. I think they need a timeout. Bill Jackson is going to call a timeout. Much to the right of 16,000 at the Hemisphere Arena. Their team leads it by 14, the biggest margin of the ball game. We'll be back. San Antonio Spurs on an 8-2 run to begin the second quarter. They lead it by 14 ties, the biggest lead. One thing we haven't seen from Chicago is the press. San Antonio hasn't given them the opportunity to play the press. Well, they have not fouled them, so they've not put them to the free throw line where they can do that. And they're defensive rebounding. They're getting the ball down the floor quickly, getting some transition opportunities. I think you said a good point a while ago. Benny Johnson leaking out on the fast break. He has two quick scores. So right now, San Antonio is doing everything right. The really defense has been terrific. David Robinson with a vengeance pulls down the rebound. That is number nine for Robinson already. Johnson Jordan gets maybe a piece of it and Michael leaks out. David Robinson's doing a good job of staying back. He's really the anchor of that defense, so he's staying back to prevent the easy layups. We've got a whistle. The foul's going to be called on Michael Jordan. He's having trouble down low. That is Jordan's second. David Robinson is taking away everything around the basket. Will, Will Purdue had a point-blank shot that was blocked. Here's an isolation. Michael jumps in. He doesn't get it. Michael slaps him away to get the loose ball and picks up his second foul. Let's see if they give David Robinson a shot here. He hadn't seen the ball in a while. I think Vinny Johnson was waiting for David Robinson to turn around. Didn't get it to him. That's turnover number six for San Antonio. And they only turned the ball over 13 times in game one. Chicago one of seven this quarter. San Antonio is a team that will turn it over almost 18 turnovers a game. The big thing, they have to play through that defensively and not worry about the turnover, just come back and get a stop. They're 25th in the NBA in that category. Robinson is in double figures and rebounds with 10. He averages 12 a game. Sutton. That's the threat of the three-point shot. B.J. Armstrong came at him. He showed him the three-point shot. Escape dribble, got in the lane, the little pull-up shot. That's a fine move by Greg Sutton. Biggest lead of the ball game. It is at 16. King has it slapped away. Robinson with his second steal. Works on King. They're not going to count the shot, but David Robinson will go to the line. Robinson averaging just better than two steals a game. Already has two tonight, Doug. It's hard to look at this San Antonio team and say this is a team with 18 losses on the year. They are playing every phase of the game right now especially defense and rebounding and david robinson has been the man 
He has not scored that many points, but he has been the reason San Antonio is in the lead right now because he has done everything around the basket to prevent Chicago from getting easy scores. Robinson and Antoine Carr have checked out. Sidney Green and Terry Cummings have checked in. Cummings battling for the offensive rebound. Chicago touched it last. Michael Jordan was very, very fortunate. He did not pick up his third foul. Reached in on Sutton that time. At the last minute, Sutton pulled the ball away. Looked like he got him on the arm. Well, the first meeting between these two, San Antonio missed their first eight shots of the second quarter. Now Chicago's made only one of eight, and Sean Elliott gives an elbow to Cliff Livingston, then goes up for the jam. I, I love Sean Elliott as a player. I, I think that this kid has got a star written all over him. I know I'm singing his praises, but I think that he has the opportunity to really be a tremendous small forward in this league. Jordan from the baseline doesn't get it. Green battles for the rebound. We've got a whistle and a foul. If that's on Grant, that'll be his third. Let's see who they call it on. It is on Horace Grant. That is his third personal foul. Baseline move. Sean Elliott and watch this finish. Chicago only two points this quarter. The three on the way. No spur underneath for the rebound. Scott Williams is going to try to check in for Grant. Next break in the action. Here comes Michael. The double pump doesn't get it. Rebound green. Vinny Johnson with Cummings on his left. Sutton on his right. Showtime. Blocked by Cliff Levingston. Armstrong. Little playground action. Let's see right now if Chicago can get to the basket without David Robinson in the game. They see King. A good power move inside for the hoop and the foul. David Robinson has not allowed any of those shots. He's now resting on the bench. So see if Chicago can take advantage of that by getting to the basket, maybe getting to the free throw line, and being able to set up their pressure defense for some turnovers. Ron, the pace of this game is such to where there's going to be a lot of opportunities for both teams. There's been very few set offensive plays. It's been up and down and up and down. Mm -hmm. Back into the line of Strickland. Sutton sits down. As you mentioned, Williams comes in for Grant. And at the line is Stacy Craig King, who heard the boos in Chicago Stadium early on. But he feels he's really quiet at some of the boos with the plays he's made. Well, Cartwright was out. He's not worried about his minutes. San Antonio turns it over. At the conclusion of tonight's game, Doug and I will be selecting the Budweiser player of the game. Right now, it's a tough choice. Jordan inside for two. Well, you can see with David Robinson out of the game what it does to the interior of their defense. Five points now on the inside since David Robinson sat down. That's more than they got in the first 14 minutes of the game. Chicago trailed by 18 just a moment ago. That was the largest Bulls deficit of the year. Told you how well San Antonio is playing as Terry Cummings, who had a love 10 in the first quarter, gets his first two of the second. The lead is 16. We talk about 18 losses for San Antonio, Doug, but people have to remember they were without Terry Cummings and, of course, Rod Strickland a lot of that time. A lot of personnel changes. Jordan, the turnaround, the double pump. He didn't call bank, but he gets his 10th point. Vinny Johnson saw a lot of that when he was playing for the Detroit Pistons. Yeah. See, the one thing you've got to do now, you've got to make Michael play on this end. Let's see if they try to get a shot here, maybe for Vinny Johnson, to keep Michael Jordan busy. You've always felt you have to keep Jordan quiet in the first quarter and also make him work defensively. Stacey King runs the court well for the easy slam. King now with four. And the lead is down to 12. Timeout is called by San Antonio. We have 5.35 remaining in the first half. The Admiral sitting, but his still, team still leads by 12. Well, since David Robinson sat down, the Bulls have outscored the Spurs 8-4, to four, and it's plays like this around the basket. Without David Robinson in the game, Michael Jordan with a relatively easy layup, at least easy for Michael Jordan. And then Stacey King running the floor nicely. Nice look ahead pass. Stacey King with five quick points. So seven points that the Bulls have been able to pick up around the basket uh, with David Robinson sitting down. You see the workload of both of these teams and the greatness of both players.
Uh, but as I said before, Ron, this is a game there's going to be a lot of opportunities, and 12 points in, in this point in the game is not a very big cushion. Remember, San Antonio led by nine back on January 17th. Robinson, six points, but he has 10 rebounds and five blocks. Michael Jordan, five of 15, Doug, shooting just 30%. There's another turnover. I think that's what's the ninth turnover. Ninth turnover. B.J. Armstrong takes it to the hole, and he gets the two. You can see the turnovers now starting to hurt San Antonio and David Robinson and Willie Anderson are going to have to come back into the ball game. 10-2 run by Chicago. Vinny for three doesn't get it. That's almost out of his range. Well, it's also you're seeing them in a half-court game, the difference in when they can get out and run and get easy scores. Came in shooting just about 35% from the three-point arc. King falls down hard. We've got a whistle and a foul. Well, what a crowd Michael Jordan draws. He ran a little rub handoff that time from Stacy King, and Stacy faked the handoff. It's like a play-action pass in football where you're faking a pass to a great running back. Both defenders went with Michael Jordan, and Stacy King had the nice lane down the basket, a nice lane right down the alley. The foul was on Cummings. That is his second personal foul. They're not going to call it a shooting foul, and Phil Jackson has whistled for the technical. He was arguing that Stacy King was in the process of shooting. Stacy never got rid of the ball. And the technical foul is called on Phil Jackson. Willie Anderson shooting the technical. Sean Elliott now is an 84% free throw shooter. Anderson 76. And 70, so you figure that one out. Let's see if the game ends up a <laughs> one point now I, win for uh, Chicago. I always thought you had your best percentage free throw shooter shoot the technicals. Either that or Rick Berry. <laughs> one of the two, I guess. <laughs> 449 remain to be played in the half. 10 points San Antonio lead. They led by as many as 18. Jordan on the double team. Armstrong for three. Buries the three-pointer. BJ Armstrong, 17 of 42 from the arc. And how quickly that lead has gone from what? 16, 18, to 7. 13 to 2 run now by Chicago. And now we're seeing jump shots in a half court game. No easy transition, fast breaks. The Bulls are now out and running. Turnover by Chicago. Number five. Here's the double team here, Michael. What happens now? You get a little bump there by Stacey King and BJ Armstrong, a 40% three point shooter, lets it fly and knocks it in. You can see San Antonio playing right into Chicago's hand right now. Oh, Robinson didn't even see the basket. That's their little play they run. It's a little eye contact play. They post Robinson. You try to front him, you roll him out in the lob play. They do that to perfection. That's a big score. But at least look at the basket. Well, when you're up that high, you know where it is. <laughs> you know where it is. You're going to hit your head on it. I don't have that problem. Robinson, block number five. Make it six. Levingston over Robinson. The tip up and in. Again, Terry Cummings must get on the board. When David Robinson goes for the block shot, Terry Cummings has got to get to the board. Two Chicago Bulls that time. No other San Antonio spur. Is that basket to Williams tipping up off Chicago's bench. Not standing around now by San Antonio. Anderson's three won't go. Well, there's the rebounding. This time on the offensive end by Terry Cummings. We have a foul. That'll be on Scott Williams. That'll be his first personal. Let's take a look at David Robinson again. Well, you see the eye contact. It's a set play, and there's David Robinson. I wonder what that feels like. I'd like to have been able to do that just one time. <laughs> Come over to my eight-foot basket in my house. You, I, you can do it all the time. Right? I couldn't even do it on an eight-footer. Now <laughs> you have to bring it down to six. But you will be playing in the uh, Legends All-Star game, ladies and gentlemen. And gosh, you don't want to miss that. <laughs> He's got bets on how long the beads of sweat it will take for you to get those on your forehead. I say when you're dressing. I don't know. <laughs> don't be panicked. Then Kathy, your lovely wife, has to put up with you groaning <laughs> for the next four days. Cummings <laughs> gets some both. It's a nine-point lead. 3-10 left to be played in the half. A Legends game on TNT. All-Star Weekend. Jordan has it slapped away. Shot clock at eight. Shot clock at four. Armstrong with another three. Doesn't get this one. Anderson tips it right into the hands of Pippen. 
And Chicago sets it up. For Chicago, one of nine from the floor in the first five minutes. They are seven of 11. Make it seven of 12 since then. You know, I, I know I'm gonna harp on this, but David Robinson, his presence forced Stacey King to miss that shot. If David Robinson were not in the ball game, that's two points, maybe a three-point play. He comes over and just watch his presence. He gets Stacy King thinking about this shot. He comes over, there he is, and he gets a hand up and he forces the miss. Now, that's not going to go down as a block shot, but that's a miss. I guess that's like in uh, in football, I guess I'm getting into this because the Super Bowl, when you knock the quarterback down and you make him hurry and pass, you don't intercept it, but you make him think about it as you've knocked him down. You hurry. San Antonio, the number one defensive rebounding team in the NBA. Six blocks tonight for David Robinson. He is three of four from the line. He has nine points for the contest, but the lead is back up to ten. Two and a half left in the half. But Robinson has more blocks than nine teams. Not a bad little stat. Anderson just has to reach on defense. Jordan takes him off the dribble handle. This is an important now two minutes and 14 seconds for San Antonio. They've dominated this first half. They lead the ball game by eight. They must take care of the basketball and execute. Knocked around into the hands of Cliff Levingston. Ends up with D.J. Armstrong to Jordan. Showtime, folks. Jordan with 14. Is yet to visit the charity strike. Important also right now that Scotty Pippen and Sean Elliott stay away and also Michael Jordan for their third fouls. Those really are the only guys in foul trouble. But Strickland takes it inside the paint. Little showboat doesn't get it. Levingston the outlet to Armstrong. Three on two. B.J. Armstrong has really led this comeback for Chicago. He has nine points in this quarter, and the lead is down to four. 126 left in the half. We'll be back to San Antonio in a moment. It is a 20-second timeout. So with 126 remaining in the half, we'll keep it right here. Now, the game has changed, obviously, and it has turned. San Antonio are no longer getting their easy scores. Their shooting percentage is down. Chicago, on the other hand, now is defending, rebounding, and they're out running, getting some easy baskets. Michael Jordan on a couple fast breaks. B.J. Armstrong with a pull-up jump, pull jump shot. But here's Michael Jordan. He just had, had a layup the previous possession. Here's with a slam dunk. Same play on the baseline, a little different angle, and uh, the Bulls are right back in the ball game now, trailing only by four points. San Antonio has their starting five in. Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan, the only members of the starting five for Chicago in the ball game. And how about that? The first five minutes, and since then, as Chicago is on a 17 to five run, the last five minutes of this contest. To Robinson, takes it strong to the hole off the glass and a little too heavy. Fifth rebound for Scotty Pippen. To Levingston inside, shot swatted away again. Strickland to Elliott. King gets a piece of it. And then we have a foul on Sean Elliott, Boy, and that is his third. That's just what I talked about. Sean Elliott, in frustration, reached back and picks up his third foul. That changes the whole complexion of this second half because you got 54 seconds left Absolutely. too Doug. you know he thought he got the foul he didn't get it and now there's the reach in and the foul it's just what i talked about now you've got to worry about getting him out of the ball game now you start the second half and he picks up a quick one he now has four so right. that's a major major foul i used to always like if i could get a guy out in the last minute of a half if he had two fouls and try to protect him so he had four going into that second half you know it doesn't always work but you'd like to do it sometimes to protect the guy there you see what's coming up on the Prudential halftime report with Craig Sager he'll have all the highlights coming your way in just a couple of minutes nine blocks is David Robinson's high for this year he's going to need every one of those tonight Armstrong over Strickland and BJ doesn't get it this time Michael Jordan out of the ball game. See, Phil Jackson took him out. He has two fouls. He does not want him to get his third. About a nine-second difference between the shot and the game clock is Terry Cummings. 16 first-half points for Cummings. He averages 13 a game. 
Chicago has the last shot. Phil Jackson saying open it up. Spreading the court. Nobody inside the paint. Be aware now. B.J. Armstrong and Paxson are three-point shooters. Pippen is going to try to penetrate. If he can get all the way to the basket, fine. If not, find the three-point shooter. Over the outstretched hands of Antoine Carr. He's going to try a last-second shot. Throws it up at the buzzer. It goes! and Phil Jackson thought it was after the buzzer and he let the officials know it we're going to take a look at that before we go to the break let's listen to it and watch for the light what do you think well it's too close to call you it's hard to wipe away a shot like that, one that goes yeah. in when you know, when it's that close, you normally count it. The problem was Scottie Pippen went too early, he took the shot, he didn't have to take it that soon, and when he did, he gave San Antonio that opportunity, and they cashed in on it. Well, Antoine Carr hits his first three-pointer of the year. He is one of three. That has given San Antonio a nine-point lead. Craig Sager is next from Atlanta. Tonight's game is brought to you by Infinity, who invites you to guest drive their full line of performance luxury automobiles. The Prudential Halftime Report is being brought to you by the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. It's halftime at the Hemisphere in San Antonio where the Spurs, thanks to that buzzer beater from Antoine Carr at half court, lead the Bulls by nine. Rosters for the February 9th All-Star Game were completed today. As expected, Dominique Wilkins of the Atlanta Hawks was named for the seventh time in his career. Well, the complete list in a moment. However, it's likely that Dominique will have to be replaced. Tonight in Atlanta against Charles Barkley and the Philadelphia 76ers. Barkley the fifth pick in 1984 out of Auburn. Dominique the third pick in 82 out of rival Georgia. And Barkley drives in early. He had nine points in the first half, giving the Sixers a five-point lead. Dominique with an assist to Ramil Robinson as the Hawks cut the lead down to one. But here's the play we're talking about. Right in front of Bobby Weiss, Wilkins goes down. Reports are he has a ruptured right Achilles tendon. He was taken by ambulance to Piedmont Hospital. He had scored eight points prior to the injury, leaving him 25 points shy, becoming the 17th player to reach 20,000 points in a career. We'll have an update for you later this evening. Elsewhere, Boston playing in Washington, where the Baltimore shortstop, Cal Ripken, Ripken Jr., was watching the action, and Reggie Lewis had the shot blocked by David Wingate. Went in for the layup, watched the long rebound. Sherman Douglas coming off his best game in a Boston uniform with the Mark Rippon type pass to Kevin Gamble for the lay-in. And then Michael Adams to Harvey Grant underneath. It's been a close one throughout. Washington trying to snap a five-game losing streak, now on top by seven in the third. Seattle over Orlando by two. That game also at the end of three quarters. Detroit on the road taking on the Charlotte Hornets. Tyrone Bowes, he's fourth in the league in assists, 8.6 a game. A nice one right here to Johnny Newman. And then a short time later, watch the no-look pass to Kenny Gettison. Beautiful pass by Bowes. But at the other end, the Pistons moving the ball. Dennis Rodman to Isaiah Thomas to Orlando Woolridge for the jam. And Detroit has taken the lead by two at the end of three. And Minnesota with a big lead over Houston. That game after one quarter, 25 to 14. Later tonight, a battle for first place in the Pacific Division, Portland at Golden State. And New Jersey travels to Sacramento to take on the Kings. In a moment, we'll travel to San Antonio. Paul Ryden has never been on the cover of GQ. We'll show you why. And a reminder to join us once again for All-Star Weekend, a preview with All-Star Friday night. Saturday afternoons, the Stay in School Jam at noon. And Saturday night, the highlight of the weekend, the Schick Legends Classic, the American Airlines ITT Shirt and Shootout, and the Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship. And today, the rosters were completed for the All-Star Game on Sunday. In case you missed it, here's another look.
In a world of sweeping changes, there is one certainty. The financial strength of the rock. The prudential rock solid. It's halftime at the Hemisphere in San Antonio. The Chicago Bulls are on the first stop of a six-game western road swing. Although it's their only visit to San Antonio, pretty soon one town starts to look like all the others. Unless you can find something unique in each city. Paul Ryden found a place that can liven up a trip to San Antonio. A road trip to San Antonio means more than just a cruise down the river or a trip to the Alamo. Nothing wrong with scenery or history, mind you. But when an NBA player comes to San Antonio, he's looking for style. Okay, I know I look ridiculous, but if you're six foot ten and hip, you can get away with this. And have I got the place for you. It has the look and feel of a European men's shop, two P's and an E, so it's easy to forget that Italica is in San Antonio, Texas, sharing mall space with stores like the River Center Drug Store and Cats, Cats, Cats. The cats Italica really appeals to are the seven-foot variety, such as Kevin Willis, the Atlanta Hawks seven-foot forward. Naturally, when you've got seven feet, it's tough, at the very least, to buy shoes. <laughs> but seriously, folks, Italica is not a big and tall store, but it is big on fashion. And your more fashion-conscious NBA player doesn't necessarily dress like you, or shop like you. Uh, we'll take three of these ties off. All right. I got two of them. Okay. I've become a tie fanatic over the last two months. I've been almost purchased probably about 20 different ties in the last month and a half. We have clothing that's really unique. We have a wide selection of ties, wider than most stores. For sure, the widest selection in San Antonio. We carry from Pancaldi to Jean Paul Gaultier. Well, I don't know who they play for, but there seems to be a common thread running through all this. Ties. Yet in the NBA, the league schedules overtime periods to avoid ties. I was just... Where were we? I've invested in probably about 15 different suits with my company, and um, I need some nice ties to go along with the suits, so I bought one, then I ended up buying another one, just like for here, for instance, I just looked at one tie, and ended up buying four of them already, so. Did he say his company? Yes, Kevin not only wears clothes, don't we all, but he designs them and has co-owned an Atlanta leather store for almost four years. My mother's been a seamstress for 30, 40 years, and uh, I got interested in from her and uh, I never could find anything that fit me, so uh, when I was in school, I figured I'd learn a little the background about it, and then like I, in a situation where I could possibly open the one store one day, I would do it. So he has, and he's given his stamp of approval, not to mention an imprint of his credit card, to Italica, a store for the NBA player of the 90s. But you can go there, too. I mean, if I can go there, any dummy can. And thanks to Paul and Kevin, we've expanded our wardrobe. Now we have to pick out a pair for Friday night because we have a doubleheader Friday. Game one, it's the Chief, Robert Parrish against his longtime rival, Moses Malone, followed by Danny Manning and the LA Clippers with a visit to Sacramento against the Kings and Lionel Simmons. And don't forget, weekday coverage of the Winter Olympics beginning February 10th right here on TNT. San Antonio scored the last five points of the quarter, including the big three by Antoine Carr. They lead it by nine, 55-46. Ron Thule with Doug Collins. One thing Bob Bass said of San Antonio is they wanted Chicago to miss shots. They've done that. Starters only shooting 35%, Doug, for the uh, Bulls. Well, I think when you look at it, also even specifically front line, Horace Grant 0 for 4, Bill Cartwright 0 for 4. A lot of that because David Robinson has seven block shots. Terry Cummings, 16 first half points. So the front line of uh, San Antonio outplaying Chicago's front line and you can see it in the score in the percentage they're 52 percent to 35 turnovers a uh, San Antonio eight they average about 17 and a half per game Chicago at five a little bit under their average of 13. And the offensive rebound San Antonio leading that eight to seven second chance points a big difference for the Spurs. Well I think another thing that this points out is too is Chicago is getting to the offensive boards but they're not con converting and they're not getting to the free throw line and it's very important to keep Chicago off the free throw line. They have shot only four free throws in the game, 0 for 1 in the second quarter because Ron, what happens then they can't set up their pressure defense and get into the game they'd like to be able to play. Here's a spectacular dunk by Scottie Pippen where he extends and avoids the offensive foul against Antoine Carr to finish up with a beautiful dunk and then Sean Elliott with a little tightrope job here on the baseline does not step out 
Cliff Levingston with a little right hook to the chin, and Sean Elliott gets the finish in two points. He did pick up his third foul right at the end of the first half, and David Robinson, beautiful eye contact. He rolls out, and the reverse slam dunk. David Robinson only nine points, but you can see 11 rebounds, seven block shots. Michael Jordan with 14 points, but it took 17 shots. And I think we have to point out that in Chicago, in game one between these two teams, the score was almost identical halftime. It was 54-45, mm -hmm. and Chicago hit them with a 34-19 quarter. So San Antonio better, you know, strap it on right now because this is a period of time where Chicago is going to try to take control of the game. Well, since December, the third quarter has always been San Antonio's Achilles heel, and we will see what that man does as he... Has 14 points, Pippen with 13, Armstrong with 9. Only three of the five starters for Chicago even got on the board. And for San Antonio, David Robinson has 9, as you mentioned, but Terry Cummings led the way with 16 points. Sean Elliott had 10. And we are set. Bob Bass talked about how San Antonio has to withstand the runs of Chicago. He calls them defensive stands. We're going to see a stand here maybe by San Antonio because you know Chicago is going to come at him. Grant looking for his first two, still doesn't get it. Of course, Grant wanted a foul. Has to get back on defense. Elliott playing with those three fouls. To Robinson, shot clock at 10, still plenty of time. For three, Strickland doesn't get it. San Antonio, the fourth fewest three-point attempts in the NBA. Surprising they would shoot it so early like that as Jordan goes before the shot. Now, Horace Grant is having a very quiet first half. He got in foul trouble. He has not scored yet. 0 for 5 from field, only three rebounds. And, you know, interestingly enough, today the Western All-Star uh, All team was selected. Horace was not chosen on that team. Three Detroit Pistons selected. And... Uh, I wonder if it, you know, a little bit has bothered Horace. There's some grumbling going on. We saw it happen to Dennis Rodman last year. He came out with a vengeance, though. Terry Cummings continues to heat it up. You know, Horace is a very sensitive young man. He's played very, very well. And, you know, we, we don't want Dominique Wilkins, obviously, to be hurt. But I'm sure there's a chance how Horace could get picked. We've got a whistle and a foul. David Robinson said Bill Cartwright used his elbow. That is David Robinson second. He picks up two quick ones here in the third. That's why it's so important to stay out of foul trouble in the first half. You figure if you picked up one or two in the first half, he'd, he'd be in trouble now. A little hook there by Cartwright and roll off. Free throws for the Chicago Bulls, which will allow them to set up their pressure defense. Bill Cartwright doesn't get the first, only shooting 65%, and that is his lowest free throw percentage since the 85-86 season. And in that season, he was coming off his injuries and only shot 10 free throws and made six. Well, he's also coming off an injury this year with the uh, broken hand. He missed, what was it, 17 ball games. So he is still working himself back into shape, and the team is getting used to him being on the floor again. Well, in New York, he went to the line a lot more than he does now here in Chicago. Slapped away by Pippen. He comes back with the ball. Nice turnover for the Spurs. To Michael, the double pump. Into the hands of Elliott. Robinson running the court. Three on three. The pull-up, the basket. That's a four-point swing. It looked like Michael Jordan had the layup. Willie Anderson got enough of him just to distract the shot, and then David Robinson converts on the other end. So four-point swing on that possession. Robinson now with 11 for the ball game. David Robinson fronting Cartwright. Was able to get the steal. Robinson having an excellent night as usual. To Anderson, he fakes the dunk and goes with the finger roll. And Chicago has to call another timeout. 14 points, San Antonio lead. Dating back to the second quarter, the Spurs on an 11 to 1 run. We'll be back. Doug, you touched on it right at the start of the second half how Chicago put on the big spurt in the third quarter in the first meeting between these two, won by Chicago. Tonight, San Antonio with a 6-1 advantage in scoring. Well, I'm sure Bob Bass let his team know about that. They've come out very strong defensively. Let's see where Chicago is going to go out of the timeout to try to get a score. 
Chicago 0 for 3 this quarter, 0 for 6, dating back to the second. San Antonio really making him work. Jordan has to dish it off. Pippen the double pump. What a move by Scotty Pippen. Well, that was a great athletic play by Michael Jordan to make the pass, and then a tremendous finish by Scotty Pippen in the lane over two outstretched arms. Strickland to Anderson. And this is where San Antonio struggled right here in the half court. From the side, Elliott can't get the easy shot to go down. Here comes Pippen, three on two. Pippen tries to take it all himself. No foul. Paxson for two. Robinson tips it to Anderson. He has Elliott on the right. There he is. And quickly down court comes Pippen. The lead is 14. 8.50 left in the third. Mismatch. We've got uh, Bill Cartwright with Sean Elliott. Let's see if they can go to him. Sean Elliott has three fouls. Griffin pulls the trigger short. Paxson uses his right arm to get the rebound with his left. Of course, Grant would like the basketball inside. There'll be a fourth foul on Sean Elliott. Elliott was playing aggressive defense, but when you have three fouls, you have to be careful. He now has four, and he's going to have to sit down. Well, Sean Elliott's got to just give Horace Grant the basketball that time. If he gets two points, you give up the two points. Now he's going to have to sit down, and this is going to cause major problems. Antoine Carr did a good job in the first half, but Sean Elliott gives him speed and quickness to match against Pippen. Now, all of a sudden, you've got Terry Cummings sliding over to play Pippen, and Antoine Carr against Grant. Also, Elliott Cummings combined for 13 of 16 shooting. We've got a technical foul called on San Antonio. And that'll be on Sean Elliott. He had a few words for referee Nolan Fine walking off the court, and he's whistled for the tee. Jordan's first trip to the line. 83% on the year gets the technical. And they will also have the ball with 8.32 left in the third. They trail it by 13. Phil Jackson going back to Will Purdue, wanting a little more activity around the basket. Will a little bit quicker, more mobile. Let's see if it will pay off with some offensive rebounding. Got Roko now. Strickland high for the rebound. Strickland averages better than five boards a contest. He's almost triple team. Purdue comes out to meet Robinson. Anderson, way short on the three-point attempt. Action dribbling through traffic. Baseline, Pippen in and out. Purdue, the board, fights his way up for two. It's amazing that certain players play well against certain teams. Will Purdue loves to play against the Milwaukee Bucks, the New York Knicks, and the San Antonio Spurs. I mean, he's, he's very active, and his confidence level is great. And you talk about playing against David Robinson, one of the best centers in the NBA. Bob Bass giving the thumbs up side for the play. A little isolation for David Robinson. Anderson just missed from that spot. Oh, what a play. spin move. Doesn't get the shot to go down, but Robinson is there. Can he clean up the mess? Yes. Oh, Willie Anderson made a great play, just couldn't finish it. Strickland goes for the steal on Jordan. Now you see it, now you don't. You got to come double teaming. Michael Jordan's isolating. You got to force him to give the ball up. Carr tried to come from behind. Falls on Willie Anderson. That'll be his first. Now let's take a look at tonight's GMC Truck Scoreboard. We'll keep you posted on all the NBA action this evening as Boston. Say what a job Chris Ford's doing without some of his studs playing. Charlotte on top of Detroit in the fourth. And Philadelphia over Atlanta in the fourth. Cross court pass Pippen with 14 out of the shot clock. Paxton just inside of three. Nets it. See, that's the difference. San Antonio does not have a shooter like the Bulls have in John Paxson or B.J. Armstrong. They don't have that long-range sticker that when you penetrate, you've got that guy spotting up, and I think it really hurts their half-court game. San Antonio's 9-13 and 13 when they're outscored in the third quarter. Donna standing around. Shot clock at 3. Robinson goes up with one on the shot clock. 15 for Robinson. Alley-oop to Michael. Oh, he gets the basket. 
And he goes hard to the floor as Willie Anderson takes a little Brooklyn Bridge on Michael. That was an inadvertent play by Willie Anderson. Michael did not take offense to that. They both went over. They tapped each other. Willie Anderson trying to keep Michael away from the ball. It was a very dangerous-looking play. Fortunately, Michael was able to land like a cat. He got on his feet, so he was upended here. But as you see, he comes down his great balance. He's able to get himself and, and land as softly as he can from that kind of height. But uh, Willie Anderson walked over. Michael acknowledged the fact that he knows that it was not something done intentionally. Well, Purdue goes out of the ball game, and Phil Jackson right in his ear as he walks in front of the bench. Well, they're going to go another look now. They're going to go Scott Williams, who has great mobility and uh, maybe can post up a little bit against David Robinson. Full court pressure defense by Chicago. I'd like to welcome you to San Antonio, those of you who have been watching the State of the Union address by President Bush, and we've got a group here that's having a lot better year than President Bush, so those of you that have been watching the Alphabet Network, we welcome you to our game tonight. 6-17 remaining in the third, 10-point San Antonio lead, Rob Fula with Doug Collins, Craig Sager in our studios in Atlanta. Half court set again, let's see if San Antonio can score, they have struggled. And they're struggling again. Michael Jordan takes a $10 bill out of David's wallet. David just grabs him. Michael couldn't even get the shot up. But if you're going to foul him, don't let him shoot it. Robinson's third. Doug. And three, all of them in the third quarter. David Robinson put the ball over his head. You teach young players the weakest position in basketball is to put the ball over your head. And that's what David does. And Michael takes advantage of it. He comes from behind, gets the steal. You know what? i tell you what David Robinson did. He did not want Michael Jordan to get a dunk mm -hmm. because he did not want the Chicago team to get excited. Two free throws, a lot less devastating than a Michael Jordan breakaway dunk. Michael Jordan's numbers against San Antonio in 13 games, better than 35 a contest, and 31 in game one. Team fouls in this quarter. Chicago, uh, excuse yeah. me, Chicago does not have one. San Antonio, six. So Chicago's going to be shooting the penalty the rest of the way in here in the third. One second inside of six minutes. The lead is down to nine. And here's the pressure. Bob Bass says he wants to attack it like a fast break. Car. That's a bad shot. It was a wild shot. Goes left, shoots right. That's what Chicago will make you pay for. Paxton for three. Count it. That's what happens. You take a bad shot. Chicago hits you quickly with a three-point shot. And it is a six-point lead, and Bob Bass says we need to talk about this, gentlemen. 5.37 left to be played in the third. The Bulls are running. We'll be back. Our score is 67-61. San Antonio leads it by six. 5.37 remaining to be played in the third. And just a reminder, All-Star Weekend coming your way on February 7th, All-Star Friday night. All the boys will be there. Hubie, Doug, Bob Neal, and Dick Rasez. Plus our NBA Staying School Special. And then on Saturday, it'll be the Sick Legends Classic. The three-point shootout, the Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship. All coming your way Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Right here on TMT. Well, Ron... Sean Elliott picked up his fourth foul on 8.32 mark. The score was 63.50. Since that point in time, it's been 2 minutes and 55 seconds. The Bulls have outscored San Antonio 11-4. to four. Bulls have outscored him 15-12 in this quarter. Robinson, the wild shot as Scotty Pippen comes in strong, and so does Williams. Williams picks up the foul. That is his second. And Eddie the, Robinson. And the Bulls' first team foul of the quarter. Foul. San Antonio in this in this quarter, 8-0 on the fast break. On the game, they still lead 18-10. This has been a real game of spurts, hasn't it? Up and back, and it's right. like one team has control, another team makes a charge, and then the other team calls timeout. There's not been one mandatory timeout taken in this quarter. Both coaches using their timeouts to try to get their team in balance. You have Robinson 17 points to go along with the rest of the numbers. The lead is back up to eight, nearing the five-minute mark of the third quarter. Jordan battling Vinnie Johnson, who's checked into San Antonio's lineup. Vinnie tries to get in front of him. He'll stay behind him. Jordan with seven on the shot clock. Cummings on the switch. Michael from 18. Doesn't get it. Williams battles for the board. Grant had it. Strickland comes up with the loose potato. I don't know how he's... He had two guys holding on to him. Houdini. Tries to take it inside. 
San Antonio a little off offensively. Bad pass by Antoine Carr right into the hands of Jordan. That's a bad foul by Rod Strickland, too. Strickland picks up the foul. We've got 4.41 left to be played in the third. San Antonio 69, Chicago 61. Now let's check in with our studios in Atlanta with Craig Sager. Craig? Well, thank you, Ron. Just moments ago, Dominic Wilkins returning from Piedmont Hospital with his right Achilles tendon in a plastic cast and on crutches. The Hawks at that point were down by two. More than Wiley has just thrown in a three-pointer. Less than a half minute to play. The Hawks are up by one. Dominique has returned to the arena, but he is on crutches. Back to Ron and Doug. Thank you, Craig. Michael Jordan. Well, well four or five from my boy. That is just that's an unfortunate thing. Dominique was playing such tremendous basketball, and he'd really led Atlanta to, I think, a very respectable record this year with all the changes they've made, and also it's a very devastating injury for them. Let's hope he's going to be able to rebound from that. Jordan gets them both. Okay, the story of this been, game has been when San Antonio has been able to get out in the open floor and get some easy baskets, they've been able to score. And when they've gotten to half court, Chicago's taken advantage of and either gotten a steal or forced a bad shot and came down and got an easy possession. So let's see if that trend continues now in the last 14 minutes of the ball game. Let's talk about the importance of free throw shooting, Doug. Chicago's has shot eight. San Antonio just two in this quarter. Well, when you shoot free throws, the game stops, you lose a lot of the flow, you get a chance to press, guys get a chance to rest so you can play more minutes. There's so much talk of Chicago trying to break the 71-72 Lakers record of 69 wins. Rod Strickland hammered, goes to the floor. Rod Strickland has not taken very many shots in the ball game. He only took four in the first half he was two for four and he's really looking to penetrate and make things happen playing very unselfishly tonight as michael picked up his third foul but you can see rod strickland really looking to distribute the basketball he had 17 assists the first game uh, these two teams got together strickland's first appearance at the line and for somebody who you want to penetrate you think he'd be at the line a lot more than one time though yeah, he's, he's a guy that gets a lot of contact, but I think he's so strong and can finish the shots. A lot of times, uh, the fouls are not called, but he is definitely one of the finer penetrators in the game. And a chance of defense inside the pickle. Coming, staying on him. Gets Carr up. What a move by Scotty Pippen. He not only got Antoine Carr up, but also David Robinson. That's really a phase of the game that Scotty Pippen has improved on. I know I've talked about him being such an improved player, but his post play around the basket is his ability to, to extend and score over bigger players. 17 now for Pippen. The lead is six inside of four minutes. Benny Johnson, the wild running right hander. Carr can't tip it, gets it back to himself. Again, the lack of a perimeter shooter forced Benny Johnson to take the ball to the basket and take a tougher shot rather than shoot the easy jump shot. 12th turnover now for San Antonio. To Jordan. Good ball movement by Chicago. A little isolation here. Michael is going to find Paxson for the open shot. Over Cummings, and he drains it. Again, you know, it's a very simple basketball game. Find the double team, find the open shooter, and have someone out there who can make jump shots. And John Paxson has seven points in this quarter where he spot up off the double teams and hit the shots. And the lead is four. And San Antonio forced to go into that half-court game again. Strickland, a little playground move, can't get it. Jordan has Johnson to beat, and he does. We talked about Chicago coming on strong in the third quarter. That is what they have done. The nine-point lead is down to two. Chicago's on one of those spurts. They do it defensively. San Antonio, to four run, Doug. San Antonio must get some good shots. That wasn't one of them. Carr from outside. Short. Cummings with the rebound and the slam. Sean Elliott getting ready to check back in for San Antonio. He has four fouls, as we've mentioned. Greg Sutton also up off San Antonio's bench, and Phil Jackson's going to counter those moves. Bobby Hansen will make his first appearance today for Chicago. Somebody better give some help. Michael's going to back him down and take the shot. Throws it up. Oh. it in, and he draws the foul. That'll be on somebody's highlight tape. And they call it on David Robinson. Also, that's his fourth foul in this quarter. 
My goodness, how a complexion of a game changes. Carr sits down. Here it is again. David Robinson comes over the pump fake. Michael Jordan feels the contact. He uses the glass. Three-point play opportunity. And it's a one-point ball game. So while Sean Elliott was on the bench, the Bulls outscored them 22 to 10. They were on an 18 to 6 run. Fouls on Paxton. That'll be his first personal. Michael Jordan now, 6 of 7 from the line. He has 26 for the ball game. Well, Michael's going to get a little rest right now. He's going to get two minutes of this quarter and then the timeout. So he will be fresh, the team back into the ball game. So he'll be fresh now to come back in the fourth quarter. We've got a whistle, says Danny Crawford. They're going to bring it in again. We just got this in, Doug. That Dominique Wilkins obviously lost for the season. He will be out at least six to nine months in rehabilitation. I guess the question is, you know, will he have to have surgery on that, or is exactly. that something that will heal in the cast? As it becomes available to you, we will pass on any information on me. 201 remaining in the third. The Bulls have cut San Antonio's nine-point advantage down to one. This is one of those times where San Antonio needs a Bob Bass stand. We have a push on Bobby Hanson. Still only the fourth team foul, sideline out of bounds. First foul in the last two minutes. Chicago, the key to them might just be consistency. Well, you, right at the top. Well, you see right here, games decided by 10 points. They're blowing teams away, so they're first in, in blowouts. Point differential first, opponents points per game. So Chicago not only scores 110 points a game, but only gets up 99. That's an incredible point differential. I think second in the league is 7.8 is Portland. Grant goes hard to the floor. We have a whistle and a foul. Sidney Green checks into the lineup. And David Robinson is going to have to sit down for the remaining 142. That is the fourth personal foul on Grant. So he is playing with four. Elliott and Robinson playing with four for San Antonio. And Stacey King up off Chicago's bench. This has been such an intense game. Bob Bass now has given Willie Anderson a rest, David Robinson and Rod Strickland, three of his starters. Bill Jackson looks out, he sees some bench players, so he's going to counter now with Stacey King to give Horace Grant some rest. Cummings gets the first, 142 left to be played in the third. The Spurs lead it by two. Let's go back to Atlanta for a little bonus coverage. Well, thank you very much, but let's go to Charlotte where the tie game is scored. Detroit and Charlotte. Charlotte with a ball. And there you see Larry Johnson, the first player drafted last June, getting the basket to put the Hornets up by two. George Blaha, Ron Rothstein calling the action. They elect to go straight into the low hole. The help is late. It goes around John Sally, and this is a big time move. That's nothing but fruit strength. The Pistons must make sure that if Larry Johnson misses this free throw, that they rebound the free throw. You can still call timeout without advancing the ball and get the ball at half court. He missed his last two. Here it goes. He missed it. Bill Lambeer with a rebound. Timeout. Well, they ran that clock down to 5.4. I'm out here in Charlotte, Hornets 88, Pistons 86 on the Pistons Television Network. There you have it, Charlotte up by two. A few seconds to play, Detroit with the ball. We'll have an update for you in a moment, Ron. Let's go back to Ron Thulin and Doug Collins. Well, Craig, the Bulls have never led in this game, but they are one point away from tying it up with under 40 seconds left to be played. As the foul is committed, it is a trip. Phil Jackson doesn't like it. Now, Jackson already has a technical. He can't afford another one. Foul was on Scotty Pippen. That is his third personal foul. And Phil takes a seat beside Tex Winter and Johnny Bach. Sutton, the NAIA Player of the Year last year at Oral Roberts University. Look, look for Chicago to try to get a two-for-one possession. 37-6 on the clock. So they can get two-for-one if they can push the ball down the floor and maybe get a shot in the first seven, eight, nine seconds of the clock. See if Pippen tries to push the ball ahead. Maybe find Paxson spotting up. Pippen running the second unit for Chicago. And he's going to take the quick three himself. So they do get the two for one, but Pippen takes the shot. 
And here comes Stutt. Two-second difference between the shot and the game. Well, San Antonio wants to take the shot so that, that uh, Chicago cannot get another opportunity. Remember what happened at the end of the first half. Pippen went too early. Antoine Carr had a half-court shot, three-pointer, which was very big. Sutton inside. He's got it. And Scotty Pippen's going to have to put it up. Takes it strong to the hole. The finger roll. And it doesn't go as the horn sounds to end the third. Another exciting finish of a quarter. Chicago has never led in the game, but they cut the nine-point San Antonio halftime lead down to four. We still have 12 minutes left at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio, where the Spurs lead it 78-74. 78-74 is our score. San Antonio 16-4 when they lead at the end of three, but when they're outscored in three, Doug. They were outscored in that quarter 28-23, and they had to finish strong with a four-point run there to maintain their lead. Since we start this quarter, interestingly enough, Scotty Pippen will be on the floor with Stacy King, Bill Cartwright, Bobby Hansen, and B.J. Armstrong. Sean Elliott with Greg Sutton. Inside, and they stripped the ball, but it's still alive. Oh, it Carr. looked like it got stuck. It got stuck and it fell down and everybody else was jumping around. I think the people were waiting for the jump ball and it fell on its own. Then Antoine Carr got his shot blocked. Two great block shots by Stacy King in that possession. I was waiting to say a jump ball. Exactly. Inside, Cartwright with the field goal. His first of the ball game. He has three for the contest. It's one for six now from the field. Horace Grant 0 for 5, so those two players shooting 1 for 11 tonight. Chicago still only trails by 2. As we mentioned, the last tie in this game was 0-0. Zero, zero. San Antonio led by as many as 18. Sutton has it partially tipped. Elliott has it slotted away. Inside the green, count the basket, and the foul. Well, before Larry Brown departed, he said Sidney Green is playing some of his best basketball for this team. He Sta showed it there. Excuse me, Ron. Stacy King has blocked three shots in the last two possessions. He blocks this shot. Then Pippen with a block shot from behind. Sidney Green picks it up and muscles the ball to the basket with a three-point play opportunity. David Robinson will check back in as he sees Michael, Ro uh, Michael Jordan stepping on the floor. So you can see that Bob Bass is not going to allow Michael Jordan to be on the floor without David Robinson to be back in there to plug up the middle. Well, Michael Jordan had a nice 52-second rest. Foul was on Hanson, by the way. That is his second. They've changed it. It was not on Stacey Green. Green completes the three-point play. Sidney Green, who's averaging five a contest. As we mentioned, 16 and four and leading after three, and they're up by five. See if the Bulls go back to Cartwright. David Robinson has four fouls, and I think that's going to be number five. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! And that what is? Oh, uh, Bob Bass is going. That's a that's a bad no. call. I mean, there, with all the battling yeah. and bumping yeah. and all that's going on, that that was a bad call. I'm sorry. We'll show it to you again. I'm sure as soon as we get a break here. Terry Cummings is up off the bench. Cartwright goes in strong, and David almost picked up his sixth on that. He had his hand right on. Well, David, Cartwright's arm. David now has handcuffs on the rest of this quarter. He has to be very careful not to leave his feet. You've got to get him out of the game, too. Here comes B.J. Armstrong leading the troops in the red. We trail it by five. Ten and a half left in the ballgame. Got to go back into Cartwright. Maybe you get the six one before David Robinson sits down. And boy, that time Cartwright throws a big left bow right up to the right side of David Robinson's cheek. Cartwright's first. Now let's see, the left side of your screen, here's David Robinson, you call it. <laughs> I, you know, that's, well, I, tell you what. I don't like to referee because uh, it's a tough job, but that's a tough call to make in this kind of game with all the intensity and all the bumping yeah. and banging that's been going on. Bob Bass, at 63 years young, was up and red as a bee. Said his wife questioned his uh, sense, I think, when he got back into coaching. To Cummings inside, the easy two. Terry Cummings has been the offensive force. He has 24. Let's see if Chicago gets the ball to the basket. Remember now when David Robinson sat down, they got inside. He got a lot of easy baskets. Let's see if they can do the same thing. 
Inside to King, he spins on Cummings. Easy shot through southpaw. You call it, Coach. Well, you've got to go in. So when David Robinson is not in there, they do not have a shot blocker. I mean, he has over 200 block shots. The team has 300-something. So you've got to go to the basket and not shoot outside jump shots when David Robinson is sitting down. Green on King. Oh, it didn't look pretty, but it goes down and the book is two. Looks like he got kicked in the thigh. I don't know how he finished the shot, but it was a great finish. He got off maybe an inch. Little alley-oop. Michael Jordan finishes with a little roll. Jordan now with 28. Well, Michael set him up very nicely. Looked like he was going to come off a screen and reverse him. you got to keep Michael going away from the basket. You can't let him reverse yet. Willie Anderson up off San Antonio's bench. Green from way outside. Not a good shot. Jordan comes down with the ball, and we have a push. Now, see, what San Antonio has to be very careful about doing is you don't want to put Chicago in the penalty here so quickly like they did in the third quarter. That's two fouls at about the nine-minute mark. So you've got to play good, solid defense, Ron, without putting them on the free throw line in the last few minutes of the game. I'd like to remind you this Friday, we've got a doubleheader coming your way. At 8 o'clock Eastern Time, Bob Neal and Hubie Brown will be calling the action of Boston and Milwaukee. And then at 10.30, it's the Clippers and Sacramento. Pete Van Weeren will be joined by Jack Gibbons. All right here on TNT. That foul was on Sidney Green, by the way. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, Michael Jordan doing the smart thing. Again, three straight possessions. David Robinson sits down, and the Bulls get three layups. It's exactly the carbon copy of what happened in the first half when he had to sit down. San Antonio is starting to stand around a little bit. We'll see now if they can score in the half court. Terry Cummings has been the man to go to. He has 26. That is a new season high for TC. The crowd yelling defense. The lead is five. Williams to Pippen. Anderson cuts off the baseline, but he's whistled for the foul. That is his third. And the team third. The Bulls have definitely been a team of streaks, not only tonight, but for their whole season. Well, you see in that one, three periods of time, they've won, what, 30, 33 games, so... We talked about the road trip. They go visit the Rockets, Mavericks, Lakers, Jazz, and Suns. Boy, that's a way to go into the All-Star break. Jordan from outside, off the back of the iron. Here comes Strickland, four on three if he can take advantage of it. Cummings inside, Elliott with the jam! The lead is seven, like two heavyweight fighters knocking each other around. San Antonio is still standing. But the man takes over. Makes it look so easy, gets inside. Hangs, shoots the jump shot in the lane, floating away. Piece of cake. Green from the baseline. Short! Blockout. And then down at the other end, Green hacks Stacy King. But what a play by Sean Elliott. My goodness. Let's see if he gets blocked out. I don't think anybody blocks him out. The shot goes up. But watch Horace Grant. He goes in on the weak side rebound, does not get a body on him. Well, he tries to block out Terry Cummings. In fairness to Horace Grant, no one blocks out Sean Elliott. And he finishes it big. Look at this spectacular play. Now, Ron, the Bulls are in the penalty the rest of the game. So for the last 7 oh, minutes and 19 please. seconds, they'll be shooting free throws. On the other hand, Chicago only has two. Let's see if that will be a factor. King misses the first, gets the second. 7-19 remaining replay. Second chance points tonight. San Antonio 21, Chicago 9. Well, they're not going to get the 30 free throws. San Antonio's not with Bob Bass water. Chicago, if they keep shooting the penalty, Mike. Tough shot. Tough shot. Boy, Grant had a hand in his face, and they buy a break. Is Benjamin Roy Armstrong, BJ, can't get the handle on it. And we've got a timeout. Bob Bass calls the tee. It's 7-0-1 left to be played in the ball game. San Antonio had the lead cut to one, but they're back up by six. And we'll be back to San Antonio in a moment. 
And here's tonight's Dutch boy in the paint. First of all, the center comparison, Doug. Well, I think you can see David Robinson has done such a tremendous job. He also has eight block shots. And then second chance points, San Antonio 20 to nine, 21 to 9. So there's plus 12 of a six-point ball game. So right now, the offensive rebounding has been the difference, the fact they've been able to convert. Well, Doug, you and I talked this afternoon about how one of the sore spots for San Antonio management concerning Larry Brown is they didn't win the close games. One in seven games decided by three points or less, but that's a deceiving stat. Well, it is a deceiving stat, and what I mean by that is you can be up seven points in a ball game and a team hit a three-point shot at the end of the game and the final score looks to be four points. So I think that's a very deceiving statistic. Uh, that can be tossed out. A lot of coaches get in trouble on mm -hmm. close game stats. That, uh, Too many things can happen in that last 30 seconds. Absolutely. Inside, Sidney Green with the big basket. He now has seven. David Robinson went out with a score 81-76. They were up by five. We'll keep an eye on that. He is, has five fouls. He's sitting on the bench. Elliott playing with four. Inside, a whistle and a foul. Sidney Green doesn't like the call as he picks up his third personal. Chicago going with a very small lineup with David Robinson not being on the floor. They're playing Stacy King at center, and he had a lot of success when Bill Cartwright was out at that position. Horace Grant, Scotty Pippen at the forwards, DJ Armstrong, and Michael Jordan. So they're going with a small, quick lineup to compress. San Antonio countering with uh, Strickland and uh, Willie Anderson. Cummings Green at center along with Sean Elliott. Stacy King now, two of four. Stacy King having an excellent year, as we mentioned early on in the telecast, how he took over for the injured Bill Cartwright. His career numbers to this year's numbers, everything is up. Well, even if you looked at it over uh, the year before, he had a very good rookie season, and then last year really struggled, or the year before really struggled, so Stacy with a very big year to come back after the uh, struggles from the season before. San Antonio is not attacking this press like Bob Bass wanted to do. Now they do it. Cummings with the reverse, and it goes. What a night for Terry Cummings. 28 points. The lead is eight, nearing the six-minute mark of the fourth and final. Pippen stops, pops, and he drains it. Scotty Pippen now with 19 for the ball game. Bob Bass would love to be able to keep control of this game at six or eight points so he can keep David Robinson over there. The score will dictate when he will bring him back in. I'm sure he'd like to be able to get it down to at least the four-minute mark. Elliott waits for Cummings to cut through the paint. One-on-one -on -one with Pippen. Throws it up, doesn't get it. Green tips it to himself. Excellent save by Sidney Green. Use the clock. they got plenty of time here. Anderson instead finds that crease, and that is what Bob Bass told us. He said, when my players have that crease, they've got to take it. What a play by Anderson. A big two. The lead is back to eight. Chicago, 13 victories in a row. Jordan is mauled at the 15-foot mark. See, that, that's a foul. Now, Sidney Green fouls him at the 15-foot mark, like you said. And Bob Bass looks at him and says, Sidney, we don't want to keep fouling. We're putting him on the free throw line. They're stopping the clock, getting to the free throw line. And we see Willie Anderson with a great driving score here. Quickness, speed, a nice dribble in the lane and a finish. But again, the fouls. The fouls build up. You stop. You get to the free throw line. You allow Chicago to rest. You allow them to set their press. If Michael hits a 15-foot jumper over you with your hand out, you fit him a pat on the back and you run back down the floor, but you've got to stop fouling. 32 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, 4 steals for Jordan and at another point. We are at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio, Texas. We have 5-11 left to be played and the San Antonio Spurs leading it by 7, 97, 90. Ron Foonlin along with Doug Collins, Craig Sager in our studios in Atlanta. And we have an exciting 5-11 left to be played. As you mentioned, San Antonio already has put Chicago shooting the penalty. And if you're San Antonio, that is a very long 5-11 oh. because we've talked about the foul situation. We've talked about David Robinson and the free throws. And right now, they're going to be forced to come down and execute some half-court plays, something that has not been one of their strengths tonight. Bob Bass has turned a little more freewheeling offense in, but he still has plays. Strickland pushed out of bounds, but they say it belongs. Well, he called timeout as he was falling out. out of bounds. Yeah. He called timeout. I thought he was being shoved out, but they didn't call a 20-second timeout. So 
That was a pretty heads-up play by Rod Strickland. Very smart play. Seven seconds on the shot clock, so Bob Bass will have the opportunity now to draw something up to get the quick shot. Smart play by Rod Strickland. He's trapped in the corner. The ball goes loose. He gets double teamed, maybe even triple teamed. Over. You see the double team. He has no place to go. He calls timeout as he's falling out of bounds. And this could be an important play. If they score, they go back up eight. So this, this play by Rod Strickland might figure very big before this game is over. We will see. 4.54 left to be played. A six-point San Antonio lead. I think you're going to see something quick to get the ball in either Sean Elliott's hands or Terry Cummings' hands and make them get something going to the basket. Both those guys also, they're better jump shooters. So let's see if one of those guys can get free. Bill Jackson yelling at the officials. Anderson's triggering the inbounds pass. Cummings sneaks behind Scott Williams and gets the easy two. That was a well-executed play. Tremendous execution by San Antonio. And Rod Strickland, you've got to give him credit to the pass and also the quick thinking. 30 points for Terry Cummings. Jordan to Grant. Two for Horace Grant. His first field goal of the ball game. And he averages 15. And Robinson takes off the warm-up. Paxson whistled for the foul. And David Robinson will come back in. It's only two team fouls. So the Bulls still have two fouls before San Antonio starts shooting free throws unless it's in the act of shooting. So we'll continue to watch the foul statistics. There are the fouls to give. Two for the Bulls. They have four full timeouts in the 20. San Antonio with three full. Now, Robinson pushes Pippen out of the way. The left-handed hook. Won't find the hole. Cummings tries to tip it. Loose ball foul on San Antonio. See, one thing now, you're David Robinson. You sat on the bench for a long time. You came in for about 10 seconds. You picked up your fifth foul. You sat down. You're cold. You've been over there probably about 20 minutes by the time you got back in the ball game. He now has tried, got to try to get warmed up, get back into this game, and Horace Grant will go to the line to shoot two free throws. Has to be a positive. San Antonio outscored Chicago 18 to 17 early while David was out. This program is authorized in the broadcasting rights granted by the National Basketball Association solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game, it's good. Without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. That was concentration, Ron. You could get Telling that free throw in and go right back to that disclaimer. But I even marked it in my book. Bob Bass being assisted by R.C. Buford and Greg Popovich, two of Larry Brown's assistants. The players really want Greg Popovich to take over next year as head coach. That remains to be seen. The names of Stan Alden, Tom Pender being mentioned. Doug Collins is not available, I might add. That is correct. <laughs> Call 976-DUG if you need a coach. Robinson now working on Williams. Pretty good looking move and he draws the foul. If that is on Pippen, that'll be his fourth personal foul, Doug. And it is. Again, David Robinson has been sitting down. Let's see if he can step up and make the free throws. At the 719 mark, remember we talked about going into the penalty since that point in time. Chicago is 7 for 8 from the free throw line. San Antonio 0 for 0. So that has kept Chicago with the opportunity to win this basketball game. It has kept him close. Robinson now 6 of 7 from the line. He has 18 points in the ball game. To go along with 12 rebounds. Pretty big free throws. They have very big free throws. 101 to 95. How about that? 18 and 5 when the Spurs score more than the century mark. Robinson cuts off the baseline on Jordan. Jordan, the no-look pass oh. is on Anderson. It's on Willie Anderson. Oh boy, Michael got a break there. He boy. threw a no-look pass that was picked off and the foul was called. That is the fourth on Willie Anderson. Boy, Bob Bass was right in the ear of Dan Crawford, and he still is talking to him. As you said, Doug, Michael bought a break. Yes, he did. Actually, Michael went out of bounds. The one thing he did was he established himself back on the floor before he picked up the loose ball. Watch out again. again. Michael goes out of bounds. All right, you're going to see this on the drive. Michael goes out of bounds right there. All right, he comes back in. He has to establish himself in. He right. does, and then the over-the-back pass... What a break for Chicago. Michael, 8 of 10 from the line. 
Gets one of two in that, in that trip. Cummings beats everybody down for it, but Willie Anderson gets a little over anxious, throws it away. Chicago will have it underneath the basket. 13th turnover for San Antonio. Decision making Ooh. in close ball games. That's what separates the champions from the runner ups, and Chicago has proven in the last two years they've been the champions at decision making and execution at the end of games. San Antonio has dodged the bullet for three and a half quarters. Can they do it the last 340? Stay with us, we'll tell you. 101 96, 340. And despite the fact San Antonio is winning, Doug, do you get the feeling that Chicago is making their move? Yes, I do. I, I feel right now that San Antonio is sort of holding on, that Chicago has all night been. been been making the move and they've held them off it'll be very interesting to see whether they're going to be able to hold them off the last 340 and they're going to have to do it they're going to have to execute they're going to have to keep Chicago off the free throw line the crowd again chanting defense Elliott cuts off the baseline Jordan heads to the middle of the court isolation David Robinson cannot pick up his six Jordan hangs in the air for the two Chicago's running the screen roll they're getting the switch and big guys are playing Michael Jordan, and he's getting in the lane and really forcing San Antonio to have a lot of headaches tonight with his penetration and his ability to hang and score in the lane. 37 for Michael Jordan this evening. Oh, illegal defense on Michael Jordan. Boy, they got a break there. He came over and double teamed in the lane before David Robinson could get the basketball. And they also had uh, David Robinson in a bear hug. Jordan in the pump inside the Graham. He gets the two. So Graham with his second field goal, he has six, and it is a one-point game. The Bulls have never led. The last five, as we mentioned, was at zero to zero. We're going to go to David Robinson. you got to be aware of Michael Jordan on the clear out. He'll double back and go for the steal. So David Robinson has to be very, very careful. Who's going to make the outside jump shot? Strickland from about 18, and he drains it. That's the shot they're going to have to make. They're going to double-team David Robinson, and someone's either going to have to drive or pull up and shoot the jump shot. Bob Bass on one knee on the far side. This team leads it by three, nearing two minutes. Pippen spins. He stepped on the out-of-bounds line. San Antonio's ball. Interesting now change. Willie Anderson has moved over to play Scotty Pippen, Sean Elliott who they feel is a better defender at that point in time of the game, a little bit bigger, playing Michael Jordan. Now, Phil Jackson's really frustrated. He may have a reason. Scott Williams tried to check in, and he was standing in front of the scorer's table, Doug, yelling, I want to come in, and they gave the ball to San Antonio on the far side out of bounds before he could check in. Cummings over Grant, it'll be short. Three-point Spurs lead inside of two minutes. Anderson on Jordan. Boy, John Paxson was trying to get his feet together to shoot the three. Michael a little late delivering the pass to him. Jordan, the reverse with the right hand from the left side, and Michael Jordan, 39 points. The Bulls pull within one. Big possession here. It looks like San Antonio is going to take a timeout. San Antonio calls a timeout. 133 left to be played. The Spurs 103. The Bulls 102. Hang on, folks. We'll be back. I want to explain the illegal defense that I talked to you about a while ago. You see the post play. Terry Cummings is going to go inside. Michael Jordan is on the weak side of the floor. You do not see him. You're going to see him come into your picture as David Robinson starts to post. Right there. The moment he crosses the line, it's an illegal defense. And what happens, Cummings goes ahead and makes the pass. Scotty Pippen picks it off. And a big possession. Chicago dodged the bullet there. But it is money time for Chicago, Doug. Well, I, we talked about championship execution. The Bulls have hit their last six field goal attempts and 10 for 12 in this quarter. So as a result, San Antonio, we talked about it, has been hanging on and hanging on. Big possession here to score out of the timeout. Who are they going to go to? You'd have to think either Robinson or Cummings. Well, if they go to Robinson, the Bulls are going to double team him and someone's going to have to make an outside shot. So they're not going to get their first option. They're going to have to go... Uh, to the second. And that's what Bob Bass said he's been working on with this team is going to their second and third options. Tough Anderson shot. forces it up oh. and he drains it. Tough shot. Michael Jordan, great defense. And Willie Anderson with a big, big basket. The fans are standing. It is a three-point lead. We are nearing the one-minute mark. Going back to screen roll. 
Jordan inside to Grant. Forces it up, blocked by David Robinson, his eight. Here come the Spurs. Don't need to take a quick shot. Cummings forces it up, doesn't get it. Not a smart play by the veteran Terry Cummings. That was a terrible shot at that point in time in the game. Terrible. You could have wasted another 20 seconds off the clock. Instead, Jordan puts it up, doesn't get it. Tip, doesn't get it. Grant, three-pointer, three-pointer. Doesn't get it. The rebound, the follow by Pippen as he goes hard to the floor. Now there's still a seven second di or six se second differential, so San Antonio must score or they got to get a shot up. Chicago will get the last possession. Inside Robinson. Oh! It's a big free throw run, and it'd give him a four-point lead. It'd be two possessions for Chicago, and he doesn't get it. Robinson was eight of eight. He is eight of nine. We're going to keep it right here, and Chicago calls a timeout. 20 seconds left. It is a three-point San Antonio lead. The rule is you play to win on the road, but what do we do here if you're in Chicago? But first, let's take a look at David Robinson again. What a play by the big guy tonight. Well, this is what they wanted to do. Attack against the pressure. Here's your big man finishing and getting the foul. He did not get the free throw, so it's still a three-point game. Ron, my philosophy on this with 20 seconds to go in the game is you spread the floor. We see it another angle. You try to get something quickly going to the basket if you can. If a three-pointer presents itself, you take it. We're going to see another angle here. David Robinson with a great finish. But I want to get back again to the shot by Terry Cummings. I don't want to harp on Terry Cummings, but at that point in time, you got a three-point lead. You spread the floor. You lose the, use the clock. Chicago probably would have fouled you. If not, you could have burnt 24 seconds. He didn't. Chicago came down and quickly scored. So you've got to be able to know shot time and possession late in the ball game it's an area that san antonio must grow in and they're getting tested severely here tonight by chicago and making those kind of decisions let's take a look and see how our premier performers are doing tonight david robinson and michael jordan 39 and 21 12 rebounds for robinson but only one in the second half mainly due to his foul problems robinson taking 13 shots Jordan 30. Now, back in December, David Robinson told me, hey, listen, I need to take more than 15 shots a ball game for us to be successful. He's only taking 13 tonight. Well, in fairness to him, he's been on the bench in foul exactly. trouble, too. So, you know, I think tonight is a little bit of an aberration. He's going to get more shots than that. I think the big thing, you look at Michael Jordan, and in the second half, he shot 8 for 13 after a 7 for 17 first half. So, I would, I would expect the ball to go to either Scottie Pippen or Michael Jordan to get something going to the basket, maybe a three-point play or free throws. Maybe set up their press. Paxson is on the floor as a three-point shooter. You cannot leave him. If they score going to the basket, you still have a one-point lead, and the Bulls must foul you. You do not have to shoot them. It has been three years since Chicago has won here in San Antonio. Now be aware, Scotty Pippen loves to throw the ball into Horace Grant, go get it back. They're going to call a 20-second timeout. If he can't get it to Michael Jordan, he loves to throw into Horace Grant, get a little handoff, and take the ball right to the basket. Timeout situation. Chicago with two fulls, no 20. San Antonio, two fulls, no 20. As Phil Jackson diagrams the play to our right, Bob Bass to the left. Bob Bass, 2-1 and one as head coach of the Spurs so far. I know Bob Bass wishes David Robinson's free throw would have gone in because that would have given him a little cushion. It would have taken two possessions to beat you. Now a three-pointer can tie the ball game. David Robinson with five fouls. Elliott with four. Anderson with four. And for Chicago, only one in foul trouble is Scottie Pippen with four. Again, first option will probably be Michael Jordan. If he can't get it, look for Scottie Pippen to throw the ball in, get a quick handoff, and try to take it right to the basket. David Robinson, all five fouls here in the second half. Chicago's 13-game win streak in the balance, the last 20 seconds. Jordan almost loses the handle on Anderson. 
Inside, King is hammered. No foul call! And then Scotty Pippen has to grab Sean Elliott. Now, San Antonio has got to stop celebrating, all right? I mean, they have yeah, not won this exactly. basketball game yet. There's still 12 seconds. Sean Elliott's got to step up, make these two free throws to give him a five-point lead, and then maybe they can breathe a little easier. Here's the play. Stacy King on the baseline. Here comes Terry Cummings with a two-hand rejection. Sean Elliott picks it up, and there is where the foul is committed by Scottie Pippen. Elliott at the line so far tonight, two of two, but he hasn't shot free throws since the first quarter. Both teams still have two timeouts, so you can expect Chicago to call timeout as soon as Elliott takes his free throws. And Michael Jordan said to the officials after that no call on uh, Stacey King, he said, that's terrible. But he didn't say that when David Robinson <laughs> picked up his fifth. He makes the first, the lead is four, 11.8 left. But Bob Bass is not going to sit down and rest until he hears the horn sound to end the ball game. This has been a this has been a terrific basketball game. It looks like Chicago had been buried two or three times. They came back strong. San Antonio has fought them off, made some big shots. Let's not forget the little jump shot Rod Strickland made when it was a one-point game to make a three. And then Willie Anderson with the big lean-in jump shot when Michael Jordan was draped all over him. So San Antonio has made some big shots. And it looks like they're going to fight Chicago off and hold them off here and get the victory. Jordan with 39 points. It might not be enough. They trail by 5, 11.8 left to be played. The governor of Texas, Ann Richards, with her rowdy rag. And she is celebrating with 11.8. Left to be played in the ball. <laughs> Antoine Carr leading the cheers on the San Antonio bench. 16,000 people are waving the Rowdy Rags. Three-point shooters on the floor. You've got Pippen as a three-point shooter. Michael Jordan, B.J. Armstrong, and John Paxson. The four three-point shooters on the floor. There's the handoff I talked about that Chicago likes to run. Boy, that is deep. And he doesn't get it. Rebound coming, and that should just about do it with 4.5 left to be played. San Antonio has led from the very beginning. They scored the first two of the ball game. They led by as many as 18. They led by nine at halftime. Chicago came back to pull within one on numerous occasions. Never were able to tie it up or take the lead. Well, you can see why Chicago is 16-3 and three on the road, though. I mean, early in this ball game, it looked like San Antonio had complete control. And Phil Jackson kept trying different combinations. And he, he got some things to work. And Chicago had a great chance to steal this game. But San Antonio has played a magnificent game. And if they continue to play the rest of the season with this kind of determination and fire and ability to, to move the basketball and get out and run and do the things they've done tonight, they're going to be a very difficult team the second half of the season. But Terry Cummings tonight, his sixth double-double of the year. He has 30 points to go with 11 rebounds. Doesn't get the 31st, but it doesn't matter. He'll hold it out. San Antonio will snap the Chicago Bulls' 13-game win streak. They win it. They are 3-1 under Bob Bass.